Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Sunday. Okay guys, so welcome back to Up and Adam channel two where we have all of the extra coverage and, um, and that's exactly what we have today. So we're gonna break down a lot when it comes to Summer House, Lindsay Hubbard and Carl Radke. It just doesn't stop. But why would it? That's like exactly why we're watching. So yeah, with that, um, smash that like button, show some love. We're getting ready to jump right in. Um, I'm just rolling up my sleeves real quick because I got to get into the dirt, the mess. But also, I'm excited for Hot Messy Topics tomorrow. I'm excited to get back into it, into the thick of it. You guys know that we've been traveling a lot. And I always have the same items that I take with me while I travel. My eye drops, my blue mean, my car keys. That's just my life. And now I get to stay still for a minute for two weeks. So I'm excited about that. Let's jump right in. Yes. Okay. So we're getting ready to get into the Lindsay Hubbard of it all because it looks like even after her breakup from Carl and the fact that Summer House is playing out as we speak, she still has opinions, not only about his mom, but about herself and about the diamond, the four carat diamond ring that was given to her. But apparently there are laws in New York City. So even though you think, girl, he broke up with your ass, you get to keep that ring. That's not necessarily always true. And I'm going to break down exactly why. Here we go. Think it a reality blurb. Lindsay Hubbard appeared on Watch What Happens Live on Thursday, where she shaded not only her former fiance, Carl, but also his mom, Sharon. As the Summer House castmate addressed a number of questions about the end of her relationship with Carl, including when they last spoke, and if he's still paying rent on their $13,000 a month New York City apartment, she reacted to the drama between Danielle Oliveira and Joe Bradley and threw some shade at Carl's mom, who traveled to Mexico in November for what would have been their wedding day. It did not annoy me for friends to go. I think when your son was about to get married, the mom going, I felt like that was a little tasteless. That's what she said on the March 7th episode of Watch What Happens Live, confirming that she and Sharon do not have a relationship. Now, as for whether Carl went to Mexico, Lindsay said, no, I think he knew better. According to Lindsay, she hasn't spoken to Carl face-to-face -face since three weeks after the breakup. However, he is still paying rent for their once-shared apartment. Which, at first, when I found out that he was still paying rent, I was like, fuck no. I would not be paying rent, like, if we split up. But he initiated the split. But then, like, when you get down to it and you start realizing it's a contract and you can get the shit suit out of you. And nobody wants to be sued. And anybody can be sued. Like, if Jason broke up with me, or I broke up with Jason, and we lived in an apartment, and there was a split, I would probably be like, pay your own fucking rent. I don't care if I sign the lease or not. I'm not doing it. And I think that I would do that because I think I would be acting out of anger. But then in all actuality, like what I want my credit impacted, what I want um, that kind of negative stuff going on, no. But also would I pay rent without living somewhere? No. So then we would have to awkwardly build a mall in between our apartment because if I'm paying rent there, I'm living there. You're not getting rid of me so easily. And that's the truth. We redesigned our lease a month before we broke up. That's something that should have been thought through. And that's not my problem. I'm in survival mode. I'm not going to try and figure out where I'm going to live at this point in time. Now, luckily, Carl did not hesitate to continue to pay for the home despite having moved out. He's on the lease, a legally binding contract where he owes half the rent. Now, while Carl does help in that way, he was sure to get the engagement ring he bought for Lindsay back in his possession after the split. Lindsay said, he demanded it back. There's law, New York law, and then there's etiquette. In New York, there's a law with engagement rings that says it's a contingency gift. 
contingent upon there being a wedding and a marriage. And if there's no wedding or marriage, the gift belongs to the giver. So legally, the ring belongs to him. I did take it off pretty much immediately, give it to my jeweler for safekeeping, and she gave it back to him when he emailed me and demanded it back. Now, following their August breakup, Lindsay is dating again, although no one in particular. She said, I'm dating. I'm having fun. I'm really busy. I have a lot of projects, and I just bought a house in Nashville. I'm not dating anyone specific in Nashville. But looking back at her breakup, Lindsay didn't put the fault on herself or Carl. Here's the thing. You are very valid in your feelings. If you want to break up, if you're not feeling this anymore, if you're having second thoughts, very valid. I think that that's like kind of a, it's a mature way to approach it. But then also I can see based off of watching Summer House this season, seeing everything that I'm seeing as long, uh, like along with you guys, her claiming that he was doing and all of the other things, it's like, that was really awful. It was a shitty thing to do. You're claiming that this man who you're supposed to love, who you're supposed to consider a husband, all of the things that he's doing blow and that he's breaking his sobriety. And it's not only the millions of viewers who are going to see it, but his close friends and his parents, his family, and also everything that happened in his family with like the loss. It's, I can see where Carl would not be happy with that. Honestly, I can. I'm not Team Lindsay on that. For sure, I'm not. But, okay. Looking back at her breakup, Lindsay didn't put the fault on herself or Carl. She said, here's the thing. You're very valid in your feelings if you want to break up, if you're not feeling this anymore, if you're having second thoughts. Very valid. That said, she added, the way he went about it was just so messed up in my mind at the level of relationship that we had. Now, during our recent episode of Summer House, Lindsay questioned Carl about potential drug use, which she regrets, at least in part. She said, I regret questioning his sobriety or like using harsher words in that sense. It's a very delicate situation when you're with an addict and I'm human and I'm trying to experience something for the first time for myself with him and understand how that lifestyle works but yeah i regret using those words i wish i would have used more delicate words when a fan wanted to know why she claimed the conversation was meant to be private despite cameras filmed Lindsay said she forgot that they were i've been doing this a long time right and they they're surveillance so i'm not myself there's not big cameras in my face i'm just at home emotional on edge I'm having a conversation with my best friend and I'm absolutely drunk. Another fan wanted to know if she was really blindsided by her split from Carl or if she simply had blinders on. She said both. I absolutely was blindsided because two weeks before that, I had a bridal shower. He came. I had a birthday. He was posting all over Instagram how he can't wait to marry me and I'm the love of his life. And then two weeks later, boom. And then I did have blinders on. She also confessed to ignoring red flags. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on women in their 30s when they have a time clock against us. And I've always wanted a family. And I do think, uh, and I talk about this with my therapist a lot, I always was putting the priority of the family first instead of like if I'm going to get along or be compatible with the actual partner. I think there was a part of me that was maybe settling for the bigger picture as opposed to a long-term partnership. Now, as for whether Danielle was right about her and Carl moving too fast, Lindsay denied that was the case. I don't think we were moving too fast. We were best friends for eight years. I've talked about this a lot, but yeah, there's a Danielle, you know, where she saw something that I didn't at the time. So yes, I think she was cr correct in whatever she saw. But when asked why she was so quick to shut down Carl's idea for a sober sports bar, Lindsay said, I've watched these owners grind, and if you're looking to make money, this is not going to be the area for you to make money for a lot of years. She then reacted to Sierra Miller asking if Carl felt it was a bad idea to be with a drinker. She said, I think it's a fair question. Honestly, I think anyone who's in that situation should probably ask themselves the same thing. But that said, she does not believe the drinking habits were a factor for her split from Carl. 
when we first started dating, I was sober five months and then I cut back severely on drinking. I've always been his number one supporter, making sure he's comfortable in an environment where there's not a lot of drinking around. And no, I don't think it was a detriment at all, but I do think he's still early on in his sobriety journey. But also on the show, Lindsay was asked what she thought of Danielle and Joe's former romance. And she said, I was only around Joe a couple of times and mostly at her birthday party in December. And I saw him there. I wasn't around that often for the relationship. But listen, I think every relationship serves a purpose, however long or short it lasts. Hmm. Okay, Lindsay. Now, I want to hear what you guys think because this is kind of a shit show. But pop off in the comments. Let us know what you think. Please, because you know there's a lot. There's a lot of shit. So I love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.